Next up, we got Texas going to Nashville to face Vandy, a ranked Vandy team playing. I believe this is the first time since 2008 that Vandy has played in the regular season as a ranked team. They will I, can't, so I, can't, I can't believe this didn't get college game day, by the way. Like, like I thought this was a lot. I mean, if, if you're going to have to do Bloomington, I, I, I yeah, it's I, I, you want to do Bloomington when you can get it, but you might not get Vandy again. I'm, I'm with yeah. you on this. I would have liked to have seen Vandy, but, you know. It is what it is. I, guess. I mean, I, I mean, they're both kind of the, the stories of the season, really. Vanderbilt mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Indiana, and who knows what Indiana's chances later in the year. But I thought that for weeks, I thought this was going to be a lock. And, yeah, uh, maybe Texas losing changed that. Maybe Van. Yeah, I think it did. Vandy, an yeah. eighteen and a half point dog here, over under at fifty three and a half. Uh, Dame, your 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 dog of the week is just Texas trying to figure this out and come yeah. back after this. I don't I don't know who Vandy like paid in the sec i think we all know the sec obviously has a very pro vandy stance <laughs> they, yeah. the scheduling they get alabama the week after they play georgia now they get texas the week after they play georgia yeah before yeah. two of the scheduling the difference here is this texas team lost dame what, mm-hmm. what do you what are you keeping an eye on with the longhorns well so my thought right is as a team that's supposed to be great how do you bounce back from a loss you know mm-hmm. a big loss prime time you were at home like what can you really focus on going into another game especially against a team which vandy has all the respect in the world right now but i believe texas is much better than this vandy team so what is the key going to be for them in my mind just going they just got to beat the hell out of them they have to just come out and convincingly just from top to bottom offensively defensively just whoop the shit out of them i mean they got to take diego pavia out of the game quinn ewers has got to look better the offense has got to look better. I mean, everything that we saw in this Georgia game, like I was really surprised by a lot of things. One of the biggest surprises to me was, you know, I talked about Dame's dogs last week, you know, Georgia secondary being really susceptible to a lot of motions and a lot of eye candy and stuff like that. Well, Sartre didn't come out and do any of that in the first half yeah. against Georgia. And I'm sitting here like, well, what the hell? Like, I'm trying to figure out, well, why not? You know, so even from the coaching regard, like they just have to come out with the mindset of, we got to beat the hell out of this team. Like we are Texas. We were the number one team in the country. We just lost at home. We had every chance in the world to win and beat a really, really good Georgia team. Well, we got to take that out on Vandy. But, 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 I, I have an interesting thought now because I'm thinking about how do you bounce back from big games? I want to get your guys' thoughts on this because mm-hmm. how important is it really to bounce back from big losses anymore? Because we're talking about a 12 team playoff system, which is great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tra- talk bad about it anymore. I've had people. I've had people call me out about my comments before, so I'm not saying that it's a bad system, but we look at teams like Texas, like Georgia, and we essentially cap them at three losses and say, with three losses, you can probably still get into the 12-team playoff. So now you lose one game, and okay, say they they beat Vandy, but they don't bounce back like what we're talking about. They don't mm-hmm. come out and really, really perform. They just, you know, skate by with a three-point win. Does that, or like, you guys catching my, my drift here? Like, is there as big of an emphasis on really bouncing back from these games? Because you look at George, or you look at Alabama after they lost to Vandy, did they bounce back? No, no, they haven't bounced back. It, you know what I mean? So, I, I, I don't know. I think it, it, that's a conversation that I think about because, again, when you're capping these teams and they're counting their losses, you know, like, okay, we got two more losses before we're really, really out of the, out of the playoff contention. I don't know. That's, it's just, it's an interesting thought to me. It, it's a different, headspace than when you played because i mean you mm-hmm. guys what you lost to auburn that year but then auburn yeah. lost in the sec championship game and you guys got into the playoff so yeah you like, were only afforded it, one loss back then yeah mm-hmm. and, and and i was at the texas georgia game and after the mm-hmm. game that was steve sarkeesian's message was look all our goals are, are still in front of us and i've talked to some people at texas this week and it's the same thing it's like yes that was a tough loss but you know we've still got a lot to play for and in, in that sense i think it yeah. makes losses feel less devastating for a team now alabama vandy that might be a little bit different because that's a, something that never happens but i think right. i think texas knows that they they can do this the 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 stat i'm going to be looking for in this game is third downs because vanderbilt is eighth in the country in third down conversions we remember that's how they beat bama they kept getting those third downs like whatever the number was a huge like 11 for 14 or something texas texas's defense is 10th in third down defense they have been getting off the field and so that is can vandy keep those drives going uh because that is what texas has been able to do to, to stop teams so if vanderbilt is going three and outs or, or, or you know five and outs or whatever that's not going to cut it they're going to have to keep those plays going i think to, to your question dame i think the thing that's interesting to me is i think it to me it matters if you lose a game that you feel like you should have won 
and mm. then and then it costs you and you're sitting there thinking well woe is me oh we should have had that we should have had that versus a loss like texas had we're like you got humbled like we got to get better i think that matters i think if you lose a game like uh you know ohio state losing to oregon ohio state probably should have won that game they seem like they were probably mm-hmm. the better team they were winning for a lot of that Texas, you're playing a quarter and a half, and you're like, we gotta, we gotta get right. And I think that that probably lends itself more to it to a renewed focus on the Vandy side of things. So, you know, we've given obviously Diego Pavia a lot of attention. Eli Stowers is low key one of the more interesting stories on this team too. He was a four star quarterback coming out of high school, goes to A and M, doesn't get on the field, transfers to New Mexico State, still doesn't get on the field as a quarterback, moves to tight end. He's an all CUSA tight end last year. You know, helps them win a bunch of games, get to a bowl game, then comes with that whole crew, Jerry Kill, Tim Beck, Diego Pavia, from New Mexico State out here in in, uh, in in Vandy. And now this year, he's he's his best target, leading the team in receptions. He's like third nationally among tight ends. Guy with a 41 point and a half, five, or 41 and a half point vertical jump. Uh, pretty impressive. He made it on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. So Vandy's... Still got some dudes, and Diego Pavia is not the only great story on this team. I think this is a, a line that is still pretty disrespectful to Vandy, who is playing really good. They're probably not one of the 25 best teams in the country, but I'm not sure that they're they're 20 points worse than Texas at home. Give me the yeah. Commodores to, to win this. Uh, Chris, who do you like in this one? You're, you got the Commodores covering. covering. The they're going to cover. Win. No, say. they're not winning outright, but they'll cover. They'll cover. <laughs> the, the, the other – I mean, the other – Part of this game, the other storyline is like the pressure on Quinn Ewers now. Like, mm-hmm. yes, he came back into that game, but now this is what I wrote about, and this is what I wrote about after the game. Every time he doesn't play well, yeah, you know Arch Manning could come in now because that yep. seal has been lifted as it was against Georgia, even though Arch didn't play all that well. That is now on the table. Then you've got this fake Quinn Ewers story that went around uh this this week, the 24-7 sports Instagram that he was gonna set out the season. They said they got hacked. Uh, uh, Quinn called it fake news. And so it's just a lot of uh, continue to be bad vibes, I guess, around that quarterback situation. But we're going to need Quinn Ewers to get back to looking like Quinn Ewers. And, and he hasn't since he come back from that injury. You wonder if the oblique injury, if he can't make those off balance throws that he was doing against Michigan and stuff like that. But yeah, we're, we're going to be on quarterback watch for Texas pretty much from here on out. Sark says and he's I, okay. You, you were, you were at the game last week, Chris, when you watched him, do you do you think that that Quinn's at one hundred percent? Sark seemed to downplay any idea that like, oh no, he's still a little sore. Well, and I asked Quinn too. I said like, how's it feeling? He goes, well, no, I think it's fine, but maybe mentally you think about it. You know, think about when it hurt, and it's kind of something you have to get over. And and so we'll, we'll see. I think Quinn's eyes were terrible in that game. He was yeah. getting pressured. He was mm-hmm. wasn't seeing things right. That's what that's what Sark said. Um, I'm gonna go Texas wins. Vandy covers the eighteen and a half because I think Vandy can score. Mm-hmm. Damien, are you a Vandy believer along with us? <laughs> I am. I think Texas wins outright. I think Chris hit the nail right on the head. There's a lot, a lot circling around Quinn Ewers. And I think that what we've seen so far, it might be a problem for him. And I don't I don't like that for Texas. I don't like that for Quinn. So I definitely like Vandy to cover. 